everybody, we're going to start off creating a perfect sales handoff for customer success. Uh, again, we've got the chat. If you be great to say hi, uh, you just maybe even where you're from. Yeah, I'll in. I'm misspelling it, but that's, you know that's fine. And then if you have a question that comes up, there's a separate. It's better if you put it in the question box, honestly. But um, I think we only get we we'll get about like 50 50 ish people here, so wherever you put it, we'll catch it, and we'll have time for questions to go through. But uh, Tommy, you want to introduce yourself and get things started? Sure thing. Yeah. So uh, here, let's move off the title slide. Um, do you want me to go uh, a little bit further back, or do you want me to start out with more of the last five years? Um, right, wherever you think. So I think uh, overall, uh, when I look at uh, just my history, you, you always find that the people who end up in startups have that kind of that entrepreneurial niche. Um, they find it really early on. So for me, it was like back in second grade. I was like flipping Yu-Gi-Oh cards from Korea and Japan. And you know, I was making a couple hundred bucks a month. And back then, it felt like all the money in the world, You know, all the ice cream you could buy as a kid. And uh, fast forward to you know, 20 years, I ended up in my first job, actually, which is uh, truly, I think, to this day, what I think of as a really strong sales environment. It was at this firm called Summit Partners that does uh, growth equity and nothing. Um, they're very well known for their uh, cold outbound model. As in, they started in the 80s, um, going off of uh, you know just like white pages, dialing uh, CEOs and asking them about their financials. Are you growing well? Are you bootstrapped? Do you need some money to grow? And that was where I really learned sales. You know, like I uh, learned pipeline skills. We learned how to manage you know 50 so calls a day, um, cold dials, how to build rapport. And a couple years afterwards, I actually ended up uh, starting to do growth uh, consulting instead because I wanted to get a little bit more hands-on with the entrepreneurs I was talking to. I wanted to learn more from what they were seeing day by day and started out with just being friends, you know, friends who were bringing me on for, you know, three months at a time to help them with projects to eventually being just like, you know, founders who get introduced in to uh, get a little assistance growing in those less conventional ways. I never got charged with um, managing paid marketing, never got charged with uh, managing uh, sales. But I did uh, help with you know, stuff like even hacking growth on Reddit, over Twitter, um, thinking through PR strategy and actually implementing um, big overhauls at their um, product overview. And where that led me to today was a very fortuitous meeting with um, Zeb, the founder of ClickUp. About a little bit over a year ago, we were in this uh, breakfast group for Bootstrap founders and realized that we had a lot in common. Um, from the moment I met him, I just kind of had this feeling that he is like a very much a product visionary. As in his perspective on how to grow a business is very um, counterculture, it's very different. You know, to this day, ClickUp is um, profitable, it's bootstrapped, never taking any funding. And it's grown from uh, back when I met them, they were doing less than a million ARR to this point, right around 10 million ARR in less than uh, you know, a year and a half, two years. So yeah, it's been a pretty crazy path, you know, pretty explosive growth. And as we uh, lean into it, I will have to tell you a little bit more about ClickUp, um, how we work, and then essentially the, the big question, which is how we sell and do that handoff. All right. So to give a quick overview, and by the way, guys, if you have questions, feel free to cut in. Just um, yep. tap, and uh, Aaron will cut, cut me off and uh, tell me a little bit more about hey, like which direction should we go in. I want this to be conversational. You'll notice in the slides that all these slides are uh, just pulled from our actual own internal database. It's not you know it's not a demo account that we're sharing to you guys. It's truly um, like what we use day by day and sharing that process to you. So to the extent that it's helpful. As for ClickUp, our uh, tagline is one app to replace them all. It means we have tasks, we have docs, we have goals, we have a lot more than that too. But what that really means to me is that it is essentially a way to put all of your work in one place. We help people essentially break down all those uh, information silos, all of those different um, switching costs between like five to 10 different apps during the day, all to find you know, productivity. We do that all in one and keep their information in one place so that you don't have to ever leave us to know what to do next. As for how we approach it, you know, we have a couple of different um, core values. The primary one is really just that customer service focus. We don't talk about customer services and we just want to be best in, in the industry. Um, the industry is, is the bar is set, you know, not super high. We want to be best in class to be the best out there, the best customer service you've ever experienced in your life. And for us, what that means is that we need to be listening to customers all the time, understanding what they want and reacting to it and delivering them on what they need to be successful. So to this day, for instance, you know, the whole core team, the CEO included, we read every single piece of feedback from customers, whether that's coming from uh, our feedback board, Kenny, or from um, sales uh, calls, from support tickets, from Facebook, even you know, over social. We read all of it week by week to know that we are on, on track with what our users expect and what they demand from us. Um, where that has really led us to is a very organic path, path to uh, growth. 
So ClickUp actually started as like a, it's one of those stories where it started as like a very personal need. The founders were working on a very different business at the time and they realized that they were just using five different instances of what, Trello, um, Asana and Jira and a couple others to all do one thing for different functions in the team. It was hyper inefficient, like we couldn't get things done like that. So we started building this originally just with their own input with uh, the device and the, the feedback of friends and you know a couple others who were very like manic about how to organize their work. And lo and behold, what we found is what we like to term natural product market fit. We're not buying it with either uh, sales or marketing. We're seeing organic things spreading through word of mouth. And as we grow, we've seen that really lead us to that pipeline of um, volume that can help us uh, bridge like the next 10 million, the next 100 million, and the next billion dollars in revenue. As for how we look at the uh, landscape of um, other solutions, we think that the, the way that we say it has really having really quick feedback loops. At the moment that we see feedback, we act on it. We're all about quick wins. We all, we're all about improving 1% every day, whether that's us or our, um, our product. We want to make those small incremental changes, push them out before they're perfect, because perfect is like, perfect is great, but it just means you're not getting feedback. You're also not knowing, you don't know which direction you're heading in. And we want to get to the point where we know from feedback constantly that we are still improving day by day. And where that leads us to is at the end of the day, the best product we can have. And I have a couple of perfect examples for this actually. So when I first joined uh, ClickUp, you know, a couple months back, I uh, was starting to work on the sales playbook, which uh, Aaron, as you might know, is like a massive document for most companies. It's like, heavy. Uh, yeah, it's, heavy. it's hefty. It documents everything from values to um, sales talk tracks to uh, strategies to even just process stuff as in like where to find certain pieces of information, who do you resource. It ends up being a couple hundred pages. So I just started out, you know, originally I had it in like a task and then I moved over to Google Docs. One of our uh, product leads uh, noticed me working out of Google Docs one day. He's like, hey, Tommy, like, why are you not using ClickUp Docs? And I was like, well, we don't have an outline. You know, the thing on the on the left right here, we don't have an outline. We don't have a table of contents. Like, uh, I can't organize this in ClickUp. You know, it's going to be a couple hundred uh, pages, and it's just like, impossible to keep that uh, straight in one single uh, unified page. And lo and behold, about two days later, we shipped outlines and table of contents. Really quick, quick feedback. And... We've actually seen a ton of customers come from this feature. You know, we've seen a lot of people coming to us for using us as an internal wiki. So when you listen to customers, it pays off because you're exploring those key needs that are keeping people from using you more than for more than what you intend them to use you for, as like a bridge to basically the next like you know hundred, the next thousand, the next like million users. The other example I would like to point out really quick is uh, milestones. So I happened to be on a couple of calls actually last week with uh, two fairly big uh, opportunities. One was about 400 users. One was about um, 850, uh, up to like 1,200. And both actually asked about this like very like niche feature, which we consider to be like a little bit um, superfluous, you know, to our core product. As in like we could do this other ways too. But they were just very used to seeing it in that certain like uh, format and that certain like uh, cadence. They wanted to see milestones and like uh, the way that it was displayed and what they were used to from a project management standpoint. And that was like their only complaint. So an hour after the call, I gave uh, the product lead a call and talked to him, hey, like, by the way, we're seeing two big ops, same problem. How much time does this take? Turns out it's actually going to take us about a day and a half total to build. So we're going to ship it this week in uh, two days or tomorrow, actually, on Friday, this will be coming out. And I have a pretty good feeling that those two clients will convert after hearing the news. As for why we are so fast with uh, our product sprints, this is the answer why. You know, uh, if you look at our market, project management, it is the most competitive market in the world. You have to be, especially for us. You know, we're a product-led growth business, so we are literally like we are sold for most people by our product. And when we think about, hey, how do we stay ahead of the curve? It's by iterating faster, and it's by um, making sure that we're always staying ahead of uh, competitors, uh, not just the product experience, but also the customer experience. That from the moment that you hear from us, whether it's like response times or it's uh, documenting the things that you say so you don't have to repeat yourself, or it's showing that you have multiple points of contact to help support you through that process, we're doing everything we can to ensure that from sales to CS, it is the most fluid process possible. So they feel as if they're essentially involved in, um, uh, in a support system that's gonna grow with them. As for uh, how we organize sales, this, there's like a key, key difference between us and a lot of our um, comps. So sales in most like SaaS businesses, you know, is, it, it typically has the same structure. You have a lot of uh, cold leads, so you need uh, BDRs and SVRs to help us uh, screen through them. You know, they do um, qualification, whether through outbound or, in, or inbound, they do that qualifying piece, pass it on to AEs, where you're really focusing on just essentially like conversion. The win rates are super important and you're optimizing the funnel to help, um, you know, kind of seal the leaky bucket 
making sure that AMs have a chance to help businesses um, help businesses stay stay um, strong with our retention and um, with um, expansion. For us, it's actually a little bit different because uh, the way that's set up right now, we actually operate mostly through product qualified leads. It's people who use us for our premium product who then realize, hey, this is um, really, really good for our core use, but maybe my team could use this too, or maybe like my whole department could use this too. And they end up coming up the funnel to us after having already like done some education themselves. And we're basically bridging them from what is their um, discovery of opportunity to kind of that realization of uh, value. From a, a conversion standpoint, it's actually fairly high conversion. For the stuff that actually makes it, it makes this way into our pipeline, into our sales pipeline, it's like over like 80% conversion, as in like 80% of the time plus we'll, we'll win. Um, what that means is that as we um, go through with these like uh, core leads, we're seeing more of a hey, land and expand strategy. Like this will never be like a Oracle like ERP software. We're not gonna have, um, well, I can't say never because it's happening right now. Can't say never, but we rarely see, you know, like 10,000, 50,000 person deployments. You know, it's usually like um, starting out with like a small core group of anywhere from as low as 20 to up to, you know, maybe like 200 uh, employees. And it grows from there, you know, like we've seen like client um, sizes uh, like triple over the course of like two years. Uh, it really does happen as people catch on and as people see it internally, they just ask, hey, what is that? Like, it looks easy to What's use. The biggest, uh, what are some of the bigger users, you, I mean, sizes you've, you've got now after people have grown? Yeah, so last week, uh, you know, I had a quick moment where I had to think through, you know, how to think about coding for 10,000 and 50,000 and unlimited users. And so that's happened. We've seen like uh, quotes uh, go up to, generally speaking, it's more in like the 1,000 to 5,000 range. We don't see typically quotes for like 10,000, 50,000, but it's happening more and more, as in this thread, the third one I've seen in a couple of weeks. You, uh, you have some uh, multi thousand users? That's so yeah, much cool. Yeah. Yeah. We have some customers um, over that thousand threshold. Most yeah. of our customers are still like fairly new, as in the enterprise plan was started uh, less than a year ago. So, you know, at this point, it's like basically people are starting to like, convert from uh, their initial like core groups of 200, maybe like up to 500, into like those like multi thousand uh, deployments. As for uh, how sales looks, you know, in that entire uh, life cycle of a customer for uh, PLG, you can see that it's very truncated. It's a very small piece of the curve. You know, we're taking essentially like these um, educated uh, leads from marketing and bridging them to that uh, product and uh, CS. You know, the a laser, you know, use the laser pointer on there because the type is pretty small, at least for me yeah. on a laptop. Gotcha. Oh, yeah. Sure. So yeah. For, for us, you know, there's a big uh, part of the core that's dominated by marketing, as in the marketing automation does a lot of the heavy work. We get the handoff right here, uh, and usually we take them a little bit further down this pipe, as in we're usually getting them right around um, the point at which they're essentially close to deciding, and they're evaluating a couple of different vendors. We take them and we uh, help bridge them over to customer success, this other part of the curve, where they're really getting that um, education piece. So the way to think about it is that we're helping people discover value uh, with marketing, and we're helping them uh, realize that value with sales and CS. The way that it's actually oriented is that it's very much product driven and very customer centric. We look for that like spark of imagination every time that we talk to a client. We want to see like what gets them to light up. And if you can basically find the features and the feature, find the gaps that you pull plug those, um, they're with you 100%. You know, you got them from that moment forwards. And with success, it's really not about closing so much as it is about um, making sure that we're mapped out to those needs. It's driving engagement with each interaction. It's showing them how to do the simple strokes, the simple shortcuts. Um, so whether it's create a task, assign a, assign a comment, or to uh, even like um, set a due date, showing them those really quick motions, getting them fluid in it, so they are like, essentially practicing the, the basic motions of having, how to get started with ClickUp. And yeah, throughout this whole process, we embody from marketing to sales to CS, we put customers first. And the reason why is pretty straightforward, you know, like we, with um, acquisitions, it's a very expensive land, land grab. So, you know, until this year, we really haven't focused on too much. But with upsells and renewals, it's a whole lot cheaper to the scale of like 4x to 8x more um, uh, or less expensive. And then to really dig into the, the meat of it, as in the reason why we're here today, is to talk about how sales and success can stay aligned. Um, how they share common core values that basically have tied them together for us in a much smoother way than you would see for uh, most traditional, traditional businesses. With us, we uh, think about most of our client interactions as consultations. Not, it's not demos, it's not screening calls. We know they're qualified because we already have that information on their uh, company size, on like their usage, their uh, you know their product level data, on the number of users they invite, and how many guests come on. We're really using this time with them to figure out what they need that they don't even know yet, helping them discover those features that they haven't started uh, using, 
and taking that into like the next level of hey, saying this is the this is the way that you should be using ClickUp to help you know create the workflows instead of the structure for you, your entire team to to do the rest work. And for that reason, like oftentimes we'll actually pull in success like way before the closing. They'll you know we'll pull them in sometimes even during like a second call with a client to just to make sure that they're already introduced to like a person that we'll be with for the next you know year or two years, hopefully their whole lifetimes. And with sales, it's similarly involved. Um, they get involved even post close because uh, with that um, with that customer success manager and account executive like relationship, they tend to usually work together on expansion deals, at least with that initial contact. If you know, if for instance, it's like a very different department, then yes, the the CS rep will actually take it. But if it's like the same person, the point of contact stays with the sales rep. And with that said, um, every piece of the company is also aligned to helping them out. You know, whether it's product team or security. Um, the infosec officer or our legal team, everyone's like kind of plugged in and I'll show you kind of where it all comes together. Meet our uh, in-house or homegrown CRM. And the reason it's redacted is because uh, I actually just pulled over a couple um, current leads, put them into like a new um, pipeline. And I wanted to do this to show you how, like, how we actually use ClickUp for ourselves. And let me put out this disclaimer too. You really don't have to use ClickUp. There are so many different apps that you can use to basically like pull this type of workflow together. So you don't have to go to your boss and be like, hey, like we need ClickUp. No, you can use this. Uh, you can create this, you know, using other apps too. The main advantage that we offer is that we don't force you to do that. Coming for you, Tommy. Bunch. Coming for you. What was that? They're coming for you. Yeah, exactly. And I want to draw your attention to a couple of things if you can follow my mouse. Sorry. <laughs> With this uh, active pipeline, you see statuses showing the area that a uh, deal is currently in. And these are easy drag and drops. So instead of having to like manually enter into a record to go like uh, switch up the, the actual um, stage that we're in or the status of that deal, you just drag and drop them. It's easy to keep everyone informed. When these statuses change, people get a notification. With um, the assignees, oftentimes you'll see like two assignees per deal. And that's because we have a sales rep and also a CS manager already on that deal, even before it's closed in many cases. Uh, for the actual like um, these little these little widgets, we'll talk about that a little bit later. These are linked tasks and dependencies that are dead useful for keeping us surprised with like the concurrent like product developments that help uh, drive the deal forward. And priority wise, like we can always set a priority to communicate, hey, how urgent is this deal for this month? You know, and these flags tend to change uh, quite rapidly as you get to the tail end of the month. You know, there's usually a lot of pressure to close, and you'll see like things moving to more urgent states. You'll see like uh, competitive uh, competitive processes speed up. Lots of different ways. So I'll highlight a couple of features that really make sense for us. And these are the ones that um, help us. And these are the workflows that you should ideally adopt to help your team stay aligned to. Dependencies. What I alluded to just a little bit earlier, with um, these link tasks on the left, what we essentially have done is saying, hey, like we don't need this feature to move forward. But the client did communicate that it is important to them. And that is something that we want to hear, hear about, as in whether it's like automations or resource management, something like big that's coming out, they want to hear about it. It's a great way to basically stay engaged because as that link task changes status, we get an update as a sales rep. And we're able to actually email the client to let them know, hey, by the way, that thing you asked about three months ago, it's out. You know, it's like delivered. And it's a great way to re-engage also to um, recover some cold leads to uh, drive deals forward that have stalled out a little bit. Because when we get that news that, hey, it's this thing I wanted is out there, we'll for sure like uh, reply back. As for the stuff on the um, the right, you know, with um, the thing in yellow, that's really a uh, dependency set as in we're waiting on, like as in that deal is the blocker for this one to go through. And the, way, the reason why these are in yellow and in green are actually because they're um, turned out what we call like SLA requirements, as in these are things we've already written in to our, um, like a, a great sales stream with them. So we have to deliver. And every time that we uh, uh, have these, we essentially know that there is a timeline tied into the certain deal and we have to uh, get there within a certain time frame with a clear set of, um, um, well, the clear like waterfall of um, dependencies to know that we are going to uh, get them there on time. Another uh, key feature for us is assigned comments. So, like, I think the issue with CRM that I've always like the 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 frustration has always been that you really couldn't take comments or you couldn't take CRM logs and just recreate them really easy or easily or know like which ones are important for me to keep track of. You kind of have to just read through the history you to scroll up and um, go through. With assigned comments, what you can do is that anytime there is a comment in like an entire page, you can actually assign it to a person. So as a, as a checklist item, so that until it's resolved, they see it flagged for them on their home screen for that task, no matter what. In this instance, you know, when we signed this uh, enterprise agreement with a certain client, they had a very specific ask that um, their uh, documents be sent to an uh, address in New York. And 
having um, basically like commented here, like Cam, our sales rep, is basically letting our CS rep, Sophia, know that, you know, heads up, this will be a requirement going forward, even if it's buried in the terms and conditions of this like uh, 40 page uh, sales agreement. Another key piece that we use uh, quite frequently is like docs to uh, collaborate across the whole team, whether it's uh, folks that we are um, at BC still like uh, evaluating, you know, on the feedback side, we're essentially commenting to a bunch of uh, feature asks that we asked about during a call or on the right where we're actually like creating like a publicly shared doc for an entire team of maybe about 50 people to show them that we are indeed delivering on the things that they want to BC drive that deal to a close and we're keeping them apprised like live of all the progress that we're making, as well as like how dates are changing on different like uh, deliverables and different sprints. In terms of statuses, this is the one that you saw on the first page. Um, because we create these statuses, it means that we can uh, have a very good and a very like semantically like a uh, nice way of um, knowing where uh, a deal is in that process. And because we can set custom statuses and create those templates, we can apply these across multiple different pipelines, multiple different um, um, folders and task lists and even like spaces in the org to basically recreate it without losing any information and still retain that full transparency into like what is what is the the basically what is the outcome or what is the current like um, status of this uh, deal or this task. As for the handoff, there's a couple of key things that we should talk about. One is that for this deal, which is like already a one back way before it was ever one. You know, you see these dates back in November. We actually uh, involved the CS rep for this one quite early on. The reason being that we had a very um, specific implementation ask is that we, need, we needed a lot more handholding. We made that clear from like you know like the moment that we talked to us on the first call. We mentioned, hey, we need a lot more help with onboarding. There are certain things that we'll have to set up that I don't know if our managers will be able to do themselves. So basically, we involved the CS rep right during that evaluation process. It was a competitive process with four other companies and then four other uh, competitors in the mix. But we basically just got there first. Before Larry even like teed up to ready to go on any of those other platforms, they were already ready to go and fully set up on ours. So it was a no-brainer at that point for them to convert. And this deal has since uh, grown up to more than, uh, I'd say, this is one of the ones that we're getting um, something in the six-figure range for going forward. Let me see if there's anything else to point out too. Yeah, the ones that I'll point out right now is that, you know, because of these um, like upvotes, you can essentially let people know that you've seen something and you give people a visibility into how often you've actually um, looked at a task through this like watching tab right here. Like uh, for watchers, it's not people who need to be on that deal. It's not just like the account rep, it's not just the CS rep. It's actually the, um, the usually like warranty managers, uh, maybe someone from product, maybe someone from um, the legal team, all keeping track of what's going on in this core task. And it's, uh, it's great, it keeps everybody aligned without any uh, loss of information. As for the transition piece, um, again, templates are a lifesaver here because we have a simple template for the, the handoff that we just basically copy and paste into every single task as we are ready to hand off. It's uh, a item. template or just like a process template or you say template, what type? Template means that we are essentially like recreating the same set of uh, criteria, like the same checklist items and essentially just copy pasting a checklist. Into it's a, like a checklist template. Exactly. And you can make this for checklists, you can make this for um, uh, folders, you can make this for entire tasks, like you can do this for just about every single piece of our um, product. We can talk about that more if you want, but I don't want to do like a whole product uh, dive. It's really just to, to try to focus on the, the core pieces that we uh, implement that help us with our um, sales to a CS handoff. So yeah, uh, I feel, go ahead. What's in it? So for example, in the template for your process, what are some of the steps that you think are the most important to highlight? Mm -hmm. So the context piece, like number one is huge, right? Because there's so, this whole history of like a comments that like the rep leaves for themselves, like this deal is like, I think multi-month. It's been going on for over uh, seven months now. It was like one of those larger enterprise appointments. It was a healthcare client. And we had to essentially make sure that like you were capturing all our information over the course of many months where we were debating like, you know, like things from SSO to custom implementations and stuff like as obscure like, you know, as like, you know, the stuff that goes into like, a legal document. And every one of those, con every one of those uh, comments uh, gets later on assigned as we go through it right before the handoff to the CS rep, as well as any new comments they need to add to give like a perfect impression of, hey, like, where are we today with this client? Um, what do they expect from us? And hey, how are we gonna get there to meet them on those uh, demands? Because when we think about um, clients, we really think about it in terms of, hey, the key to success, the key to really driving value for them is to basically to give them everything they want, right? But the path to getting there isn't, it's not, there's no silver bullet. It's like a, it's kind of like a, it's, a, it's like a, you're amassing a lot of little small wins for them, whether it's, you know, responding faster or it's um, keeping track of those like tiny asks or those like tiny like um, memo items that it's in, hey, like reach out to this manager at some point because I think we'll need more help onboarding. 
or showing like very specific attention to like how they've already set up their workflows. We do all of that within this like a task uh, system that we know that these things from things we'll have to do going forward for that client even after the person the point of contact changes. The other things that are really important is that we also try to um, make sure all of our records are filled out pre um, pre handoff. So whether that's in our CRM or in our like in house CRM, we always make sure that it's our, our, it's fully complete. You have to check it off each time. And we always go through their uh, workspace ahead of time to make sure that they are ready to start, they're activated, even before they passed on to the onboarding uh, person. And yeah, the last step is always the email, the email introing them in warmly and saying, hey, by the way, you've talked to this person before, but now going forward, they will be your primary. If you had a deal that's a few months long, how roughly do you think earlier before the close was this customer success person introduced? So I think for this specific deal, the CS yeah. rep was actually introduced um, on the third or fourth call back in uh, uh, November. And That's from that time forward, it's very early on. But we don't jump on every call, right? The sales rep is ultimately responsible for like, you know, essentially like being the quarterback for this whole ecosystem. They're the ones saying, hey, like, we need you here. We need product on this call. We need um, legal on this call. And over time, as that relationship develops, it makes it a lot easier for people to um, just really build that trust in you to know that you are actually the, the team that will make sure that they are satisfied even at post-close. Because it, you know, if you don't get a great experience during the sales process, how could you expect it to get better after the deal ends, right? After the commitment's made. And that's why even post-close, we have that same um, mentality. We uh, are usually involving product in like way before but even afterwards, we're also pulling the sales reps uh, back in to help um, either troubleshoot issues or to um, get uh, new things teed up for them that are impactful for expansion, for uh, renewal, things that are you know not central, not very core to like a sales rep's normal duties, but still like we care about it because like it's a very like um, it's a very harmonious relationship between CS reps and uh, sales reps. I know like for instance like Cam and Sophia, they actually talk once once a week on Fridays just to catch up on hey like. Where are those expansion ops that we might be missing? Um, where are our current deals? How much um, inbound do you have for me in the next week or two? Just so I can basically like a um, better budget for my uh, calendar, stuff like that. And then, you know, you've already seen how cloud we are with the success, the success team. You know, sales is like working hand in hand with success all the time. But we're also equally collaborative with our support, you know, our CS, our uh, support reps. They're usually in front and they have like a quick uh, plugin that shows them our uh, deal task where they can see any necessary information on who the owner is, hey, who's associated with this contact or this like company name. And in this instance on the left, you actually see our CS rep tagging in one of our, um, one of our uh, sales team members and giving them a heads up that this might be something that they might be interested in. And turns out it actually is a different reseller, but for the same client. So it's very important to get that same like a single source of truth. Between front and click up, we essentially have like the full system to make sure that nothing is lost. On the right, this one's even bigger because uh, this actually helped us revive the deal that was uh, cold, had been cold for a couple um, weeks at this point. They um, wrote in asking about um, help for a uh, certain uh, sport task. And as they had a great experience with the sport, they ended up actually sending over their um, RFP for like a larger deployment they're looking at for the whole company. And because we got tagged in, knowing that it's uh, related to uh, one of our uh, reps deals, they uh, now have a chance to re-engage and they actually are um, um, picking this from uh, cold leads back into like the actual active pipeline. Yep. Time yeah. was click up virtual before this or headquartered. What was kind of like the physical setup? Because again, the collaboration. Uh, what was like before? Has it changed with all the COVID? Well, the chaos. Yeah, it's a good question. Yeah. Yeah. So like yeah, everyone working together sounds good in theory. Kumbaya, but. We had about uh, we had about fifty people um, back then, like closer to seventy five this year, and most of them were based in San Diego. As then we relocated from uh, San Francisco to San Diego about a year ago, and the majority is still staying in San Diego right now. But um, as we do look at like you know the next couple of months, we're realizing that hey, it may not always make sense. Um, we're dealing with the remote work uh, trend pretty well, and that we already have like a very long green system click up for using like um, keeping the people um, looped in creating transparency, making sure there's no loss of information. So working remote for us actually hasn't been that much of a challenge. I think the key challenge from a sales standpoint is keeping morale up, right? Because you don't have the constant affirmation of having like a manager like, you know, that you can walk to for advice, walk to for uh, support. You end up having to do more like, you know, team calls to do morale boost, to check in on people, to make sure that hey, everybody's feeling good and it's not like the stress of being like working from home isn't getting to them. Yeah. Yeah, makes sense. You think you guys would stay? So basically, 
um, uh, I guess so to, collaborate, to ensure people are like really collaborating, we think is another, um, besides like commenting in documents, whether it's with sales, I mean, with success or product, other other kind of techniques you do is like scheduled calls or like buddies or what are some of the ways that they really kind of create more collaboration between the different groups? Yeah, I mean, it's like the the uh, group happy hours, right? Like we'll usually do a sales and CS happy hour once a week. Um, so we'll do those remote now, um, I'm sure to you guys. And we'll also do uh, little things like uh, one-ones between like the CS reps that work most closely with certain rep, you know, because we have um, three CS reps and we have uh, three sales reps. So basically it's almost paired off one-to-one -one, and that those are usually the ones that I tag team clients with. From a, um, beyond that standpoint, I think we're also doing a lot of um, a lot more activity tracking. Like we actually created a, a bunch of tools recently, like in our actual product called uh, Activity View, to show like what people are working on at any one time. So you get a little bit more visibility into like what deals are taking too much time, what deals are stalling, perhaps what's being lost out, and you kind of get that like a uh, quick like a uh, fire hose of information on everything that's going on. If you drag Activity View into like the everything view, you essentially get uh, within our platform um, a quick pulse, a quick pulse on everything that's going on. Yep. All right, keep moving. But um, I'll just throw, there's a question here I'll just throw out. Yeah, go for it. But um, Peter had asked, hey, how do you measure day by day growth if you do? I was just like, how do you measure growth by day, by week, by month, what kind of rhythm? And then if it is like on that faster rhythm, what are you looking at? So for our evaluations, we um, tie everything back to core values. We always uh, talk about, hey, like, how much are you living up to the company standards for core values, whether it's customer service, it's quick wins, it's working harder and smarter, you know, things like that. So when we do these evaluations on like a week by week basis, it's not daily perhaps, but we're basically getting like the same kind of, hey, like have you, have you progressed since the week before? Are you like a better salesperson? Are you a better um, embodiment of the company values? Or are you living up to the click up uh, brand, better or worse? And these like check-ins give us like that constant feedback loop for uh, our employees to know that, hey, like I'm doing better, I'm uh, on the right track. These are the areas that I need to improve on. From a day-by-day -day basis for, you know, the product stuff, like, it's just the metrics, you know, we have, like, really good metrics on all of our data, uh, all of our usage data, and as people are adopting, like, new features or not adopting, we know that the stuff that we're changing up, the stuff that we're actually um, testing out, A-B testing, are having, like, either a very big impact or being not very impactful for those uh, audiences. Yeah, it's tricky. But, um, definitely so for you, or for sales, are most, I saw you have HubSpot, so you use your own app for CRM, you use, is HubSpot for marketing? Like where are you kind of most of your metrics living around, around the sales? Uh, or I guess maybe I should ask you, like what, what kinds of metrics do you look at across just marketing or sales? There's usage, what kind of apps? And software stack. Yeah, so the marketing side is, uh, it's a couple actually. We use uh, both Grafana for um, a lot of the dashboarding as well as um, um, uh, attribution for you know like the social ads for knowing uh, where we're getting those amounts from from a sales standpoint. For, what, was it? what was that? The one you just mentioned. Oh yeah, attribution. Uh, I know the name of the app. Yeah, it's called attribution app. Oh, it is. Yeah. Okay, it's the name. Nothing. Okay. Well, too obvious for me. Like what? Who's on first? What was that? I said, who's on first? Who's on first? That, oh man, you. Uh, it's a very old, uh, it's like a, a, um, an epic comedy scene by the Three Stooges. Mm -hmm. Gotcha, so, gotcha. Yeah, you look it up. I'll have to after this. Yeah. But yeah, um, from a sales standpoint, we do use uh, HubSpot for our CRM, and that's because, like, you know, just, it's for the integrations, for the automation pieces. You know, it ties better to like the outreaches that we use to do those, uh, I mean, to do that marketing automation, it ties better to Drip. But we don't really have to um, um, use that, you know, forever. It's more like we're using that because, like, we don't fill all those gaps yet as like a full-fledged CRM for like, a, you know, especially when we're handling about like 100,000 like potential leads per month. So overall, I mean, when we think about, hey, like, what does a perfect CRM look, look like for us? It's kind of like the same mentality as what we have for um, our core platform. We want everything to live in one place to be like a perfect system of truth that is collaborative, right? If CRMs were a little bit better to use, I would love CRMs. You know, I think the feedback you always hear about Salesforce or uh, HubSpot. Is that you know they do the job well? I don't think I don't think most sales reps are like hyper against either. They're, like, they're both like usable enough. They're both good enough, but no one's like raving about it. No one is in love with their CRM. Um, yeah, I mean most tools have their pros and cons, but yeah, CRMs. I mean Salesforce can do anything, but the problem is can do anything now. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. So by the way, Abbott and Costello was the who's on first routine. So 
Uh, I put the link to the uh, YouTube in the in the chat. So it's if you haven't seen that, dang, it's a classic. Like Eighty years ago, but yeah, it just lives on. Uh, okay, so let's keep moving. Yeah, uh, and I'll speed through this part because uh, again, it's kind of rehashing the stuff that we already talked about. When we bring product in for these uh, sales fields, they are pivotal because when you ship what people want, you're essentially giving them success in a nutshell because you're helping them uh, unlock those features, those like use cases that they came to you for in the first place. So by quickly responding to client feedback, these like a uh, product level, um, um, like BC product, like uh, product steps that we take to uh, help uh, advance the deal are the ones that really like push us to a close in a lot of situations. And when we have a quick one, we can ship to basically solve a small problem to you know, make things a little bit more useful for them. We'll do it because it takes us you know an hour or two, four hours max. We'll do it if it's a especially when it's like an important client. As for how we organize it with feedback, this part's really cool too. We have Kenny as a feedback board, so everything that we uh, hear, whether it's like a feature request or like a bug or anything that's on the roadmap at all, it's all on Kenny. It's all our uh, feedback board, and. Yeah. Then, Tried. Yeah, exactly. Candy.io. And when you subscribe as a sales rep, you get updates anytime that someone from your team, uh, a customer that you are engaged with, or someone that you are actually um, uh, actually talking to is like basically uh, commenting or uploading or doing anything to do with a feature request. So you get like a perfect line of visibility into like, what are we doing? What are we lacking? And then essentially, how do we get there? And how fast will we get there? So these are all great ways to basically like, create more in, uh, initiative for them to re-engage clients, especially when like they know that there are key blockers for them from a product standpoint. And to wrap it up, you know, the, the point of this is all very um, straightforward. It's if you if you can sell as a team, your win rates will go up massively. Whether it's um, sales and success or sales and product, all of these tied together, and especially with that sales to success loop, you want that to be as tight as possible. You know, we, we essentially like tell them you should be best friends because if you're on the same team, you're both doing really big pieces of uh, winning and then retaining that client. And all of that ties down to can you make them successful? Can you meet their needs? And the way that to do so, for us at least, is to help unify all those workflows into one so that when you're transitioning over a task, you just drag and drop it from a, a sales funnel into the client success funnel. You don't lose any information. You have all the previous contacts on that really needed, the emails they sent. You have perfect transparency like the emails they sent that are copy-pasted that are important. And you have the send comments checklist to basically make sure that as you are doing that handoff, there's no frustration with, hey, like, I told them this, but we didn't get it. We try to basically meet all those needs in one. And you'll never forget those details when you create a system for yourself to remember them. And last but not least, um, to cap off today, you know what we essentially have built is basically a, an engine to help power that flawless and that really frictionless customer experience with us. Yeah, thanks. Thank you right. All your part. Yep. So I just had a, a couple things on, and it's really actually more on the handoff, the other handoff, which is from if you have like an SDR, BDR type of team to salespeople. So there's those two handoffs that Tommy flagged in the image. One was from kind of marketing to sales. The other is from sales to success. Um, but in that marketing sales, really talk about like SDRs, inbound SDRs or outbound SDRs. But it's really important for those relationships to be tight and for the SDRs to kind of know their salespeople they work with and to have relationships with them to for the salespeople to invest in teaching the, their junior partners or the SDRs to know the quirks and pros and cons of each salesperson. Uh, so that's why let's say outbound prospectors on that side, if they are, if you do have them um, and they're not for everybody, if you do, they should work with specific salespeople. So they have that relationship, right? And they just work with that salespeople. So there's that um, collaboration. They just know each other. They, they know how each other work and they can be, have a tighter, way they work together with the prospects. So it feels more seamless to the prospects. That's right. Yeah. Because for us, you know, I mentioned that our sales process is very product heavy. It's very much product centric. So a lot of the, the reps that will actually like pick up as our, our SDRs, the folks who will term uh, onboarding specialists, will actually be coming over from CS, from customer support, moving into sales roles, where they do need a little bit of mentorship to know, hey, like, not only do I qualify, not only do I demo, how do I actually show them um, how to use the product and how to some ideas they qualify them so that we know that we are ready to buy before they are moved over to the AE. So yeah, we do have that kind of engine being set up and it's critical, you know, like these, uh, these uh, CS reps need a lot of mentorship to basically get there from a sales standpoint. And our, um, so far our uh, accountants like this have been super happy to help. They kind of each taken one uh, rep under their wing 
and it creates like a really uh, seamless funnel for us because we're getting people who are very, very educated on our product. We can already um, know how to talk about it. We can uh, run through it, do the workflows really well, help clients troubleshoot issues. Um, and then we basically take, the, take these very informed individuals and we make them into good sales reps. Yeah, I think in general, like doing handoff, wherever the handoff is, it makes it's better when it's not just kind of like team to team. It's really more of a person to person when people know each other, whether it's from like people on the sales team who know people on the success team or people on the marketing or SDR teams, know people on the sales team or support to product, wherever they are. Like when you can have people who know each other across teams, that's really what helps make handoffs work more smoothly. Exactly. Uh, I think that's basically, I think there's another slide. It's not, you can just hit it one more. Probably just yeah. did. Um, so actually, one, just go to the next one. So anyway, this is a little more detail. If you do have outbound SDRs, and again, it's more of an example when you have people working together, like you want to have expectations. But I think especially when you've got outbound SDRs, any salespeople I just want to highlight this because so many times there are problems with this type of relationship. And just knowing that, for example, like the outbound prospector should be doing most of the appointment setting for the salesperson, but not all. They are trying to make sure that a lot of the way that this, your data, your systems and data are being used are done consistently with more cleaner data, because that's really what inside salespeople and SDRs are better at. Salespeople uh, may or may not be field salespeople. In the past, you know, no one's really field now, but kind of the worst, because there's just challenges with those roles. But I think it's important, too, that salespeople don't have an expectation that the, their junior partners, whether they're SDRs, whatever you call them, are kind of like their assistants they're supposed to be partners. Each has a, a role to play and it's about helping each other as a team. You know, you've got attackers and defenders in sports. So they're, they're working together, even if one is you know, technically more junior than the other. And the salespeople still need to prospect to some sort of handful, maybe five, 10, 20, 30 types of accounts and partners, uh, unless you're just so busy, so successful, they don't have to. Or if they're, I mean, even with like a click up, it's possible that there's distribution partners, marketing partners, other places to kind of like share the word that would be relevant. Um, so it's like a good way to think because what happens when companies are um, go on too long being inbound driven or what they call product led or inbound, uh, you, can, you can develop a very reactive sales culture if that's all they're used to doing. So, all right, I think that's I think that's it. Yeah, that was awesome. Okay. Great. So, oh yeah, what I should mention too, that we've announced we're having an Own Your Growth virtual conference in May, May 20th, 21st. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure it's on our website, predictablerevenue.com. I don't remember the exact landing page, but we're going to have a track on like sales legion activities and some other topics around personal growth, own your career growth and things like that. I'm very excited about it. So we got, let's see if there's some questions. I know some people, someone raised their hand. Um, Oh, there we go. Someone growth.predictablerevenue.com. I saw threw it in there. And uh, I, sorry, someone threw a hand up, maybe went down. Do we have any questions here? Uh, sorry, and Tarlin asked a question, which is, is the PDF going to be shared? And I wasn't sure what PDF you mean from the slides. I know the recording will be. So yeah. if you have a different clarification question, maybe you can throw that into the chat or... Uh, Question section. Yeah, I can email you the slides. So, all right, no questions. Well, so thanks, Tommy. Really appreciate it. It's like it really, it's a neat product and culture and business you've got there. That product led. I mean, it's hard to get to the product love, uh, product led growth stage. Um, sorry, actually, one last thing here from Chandler. Aaron, I missed the other scaling one. Can you send me that one too? The scaling one? Was that a, a webinar? So sorry, Shannon. Was that a webinar or scaling what? Was it a, uh, yeah. So Marisol, maybe you can chat with Chandler here. Um, I think they all get put on YouTube. So if you remember who was in it, yeah, I would check YouTube for that. And anyway, Tommy, thanks very much for sharing what's going on there. Uh, the idea of like, it's really impressive what ClickUp is doing and what you've got. It's hard to get there. Do you remember, sorry, you might've mentioned this. When did ClickUp start? Do you remember when it was founded? Yeah, the first beta was released in uh, January of 2018. Ah, pretty fast. That's right. Mm -hmm. so it's been less than two years. About two, yeah. Yeah, a little over two years now. A little bit over two years, yeah. 
Yeah, that's pretty, especially in a, such a crowded space. So I think an example where, you know, when you can get the right team, especially like a technical team that can do that, which is probably a lot of it, and marketing, get people using it. I mean, they built a lot pretty fast. So that's really impressive. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, it's been uh, pretty amazing, honestly. Um, it's thanks to how we designed it. Yeah. Thanks for coming on and sharing the story. And everyone who joined, have a great Thursday. Take yeah, care, everyone. Thanks for coming on. All right. Take care.